Hi folks, Lou here, and I'm going to talk about a subject that perhaps isn't directly related to game design unless you are designing an old school quote unquote RPG role playing game. I'm going to talk about a convention I went to recently called GrogCon in Orlando, Florida. Now, I thought that GrogCon was pretty much unique because I had not heard of other old school RPG conventions, in other words, conventions that concentrated on advanced D&D, the first edition of D&D, and related games like uh, Holmes Basic or Mold Bay Basic. But when I posted a text report of the convention on my otherwise more abundant blog, it got a lot of responses from people talking about other conventions like it. But all of them were far, far from the southeast, from either North Carolina, where I used to live, or uh, Florida, where I am now. Nonetheless, there's not very many of these conventions. And GrogCon might be unique because it's attached to a larger convention. In this case, that convention is Crucible, which is uh, miniatures, but miniatures in the sense of Warhammer and War Machine, not historical miniatures. So Crucible takes care of all the administrative stuff, and it makes it simpler for James Garutzos, who is the man who runs uh, GrogCon. And GrogCon is associated with a well-known podcast and YouTube channel called Grog Talk. This is a relatively new convention, just a few years. Um, I think this may have been the third year or possibly the fourth year of the convention. So what do they do? Well, aside from recording a episode of Grog Talk with a small audience, mostly they play Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and related games. Um, they have a tournament because that's what conventions seem to do. And that tournament has several tables of people playing the same adventure with different GMs. And then the GMs, along with the organizers and the people who wrote the adventure, get together and decide which table wins a prize. In this case, the prize was a, looked like it might've been a paperweight or a, something that was uh, computer printed about that tall that could be painted and so forth, or just used as is. Uh, what else goes on here? Well, they have a traditional, traditional, you know, it's only a few years, a traditional adventure using Holmes Basic, where ra character races are character classes in effect. So you have a dwarf. Dwarf isn't a dwarf cleric or a dwarf fighter, it's a dwarf. And an elf is an elf, and so forth. And so they have 12 dwarves go through an adventure where they are using three-dimensional, sometimes computer-printed uh, terrain. Now, last year, I watched, well, I actually played in one where the 12 dwarves were adventuring in the Lonely Mountain and trying to find treasure. Um, and we went a little farther than we should have because it was about the end of the one-shot adventure. And one-shot adventures are very different from uh, campaigns. So some of the players wanted to check out this last big room, which was probably going to contain Smaug the Dragon. And others of us hung back. Well, yes, it contained Smaug the Dragon. And it blew breath through the doorway and it killed five of the dwarves. This year, it was Aztec-looking terrain being used. Uh, especially an Aztec step pyramid of maybe five levels. So you could take off levels and put things in there and have uh, fighting go on and so on. And then if they moved up a level, you could put another level on top and it would be in that and so on. It's kind of cool. And I have a couple of photographs uh, of that with my uh, blog report. And this took about four hours to reach some kind of completion. And of course, the party split up and one person was 
uh, working with one of the GMs while the rest were working with the other GM. Fortunately, there were two GMs. There were uh, other adventures. Uh, one fellow ran an adventure where all of the characters were either paladins with holy swords or clerics with maces of disruption. And they went to a demiplane and took on a dragon and uh, a lot of de demons. Although it turned out the GM had uh, underestimated how powerful those characters were. So the characters were going through the monsters pretty quick. The convention was held at a Doubletree Hotel, which uh, I was right next to Universal in Orlando, uh, the kind of hotel that has very large parking fees, um, and was not particularly impressive otherwise, but I go into that in more detail in the blog report. So if you're looking for a place where you can commune, so to speak, with other people who like old school D&D, &D, then this is one of those places you could go. Thanks for listening.